This is a lecture course on synchronization, part 1. Self oscillations. The word synchronization literally means sharing a common time. However, when we talk about synchronization in the context of the theory of dynamical systems, we assume that the common time is shared by oscillations. Oscillation is a motion that shows some degree of repetition. Oscillations occur in physical systems called oscillators. Here we introduce a definition of an oscillator. An oscillator is a physical object whose state changes in time in a repetitive, rhythmic manner. Oscillates. However, not all oscillators can synchronize. Only a special kind of oscillators can demonstrate synchronization. They are called self-oscillators. A famous paradigm of a self-oscillator is a mechanical pendulum clock. On the right-hand side, you can see two-phase portraits and two solutions of equations that describe the behavior of the angle of the pendulum in this clock in the course of time. This self-oscillator has the simplest oscillatory attractor, the limit cycle. You can immediately recognize a distinguished feature of self-oscillators. From initial conditions starting in a certain vicinity of the attractor, here of the limit cycle, their phase trajectories converge to the attractor. There is a number of features that a self-oscillating system possesses. First of all, the oscillations do not decay in time. Second, they lose energy while oscillating, which means they possess dissipation. In mechanical systems, such as the clock shown, the energy is lost due to mechanical friction. In electrical devices, it is dissipated due to heat losses, and in biochemical systems, due to less obvious mechanisms. Third, in order to be able to sustain their oscillations, despite energy losses, self-oscillators need to feed on a source of energy. In the pendulum clock, the energy is provided through lifting the load initially. When the load gradually falls down, it releases potential energy. And the potential energy of the load is transformed into the energy of oscillations. Fourth, the influx of energy per time unit can be constant in time, which means that power can arrive in a non-oscillatory manner, just like in this clock. Fifth, self-oscillators themselves choose the shape amplitude and time scale of their oscillations. From a range of initial conditions, the system settles down to the same pattern of oscillations automatically. Sixth, self-oscillations are very stubborn. This means that if the system is perturbed, for example, if the clock is shaken, after some transient time, the same pattern of oscillations will be resumed. It is important to emphasize the difference between self-oscillators and systems which oscillate but not in a self-sustained manner. An example of an oscillatory system which is not a self-oscillator is this swing. At first sight, it is similar to a pendulum clock, since in fact it is a pendulum which oscillates. Its features common with the clock are it oscillates, it loses energy while oscillating due to mechanical friction. However, it is lacking many features that are present in the clock and should be present in any self-oscillator. Namely, it does not consume energy from outside. It has no influx of power at all. Its oscillations decay in time and eventually stop. We cannot speak of shape, time, scale and amplitude of any sustained oscillations here since all oscillations stop eventually. Self-oscillators can be of any origin. For example, they can be made by humans. One example is the familiar pendulum clock, and another is an electronic circuit generating electromagnetic waves, named after Balthazar van der Poel. With this, self-oscillations are ubiquitous in living systems at all levels of organization from the level of single cells to the levels of organs and even at the level of populations. An example of self-oscillations in a cell is illustrated in this, side, in this slide. 
This is an embryonic heart cell in which the concentration of ions of calcium fluctuates in the course of time. The video shows a recording of calcium oscillations in the cell. The time traces to the right show the data describing calcium concentrations as functions of time. This slide shows cell oscillations occurring in an organ. This organ is the heart of a frog, which was isolated from the frog. The trace to the right shows how the position of a point on a surface of the heart fluctuates as the heart beats spontaneously. To reiterate, non-damped oscillations occurring in self-oscillators are called self-oscillations. Self-oscillators can be described as dynamical systems. In the phase space, images of self-oscillations are non-fixed point attractors. These attractors can be classified based on the type of self-oscillations. If the self-oscillations are perfectly periodic, the image in the phase space is a limit cycle. If oscillations are not strictly periodic and not chaotic either, if they combine two or more time scales of oscillations, their image is an invariant torus. Deterministically chaotic oscillations are represented as strange attractors. In addition, and counterintuitively, oscillations which satisfy all criteria of self-oscillations can be induced in nonlinear systems by external random fluctuations applied to the system. In this course, we will not consider chaotic or noise-induced oscillations. Remarkably, all these self-oscillations can be synchronized. I would like to acknowledge professional and technical assistance from Olga Sosnovtseva, Ida Peterson, Dmitry Pasnov, and the Center for Online and Blended Learning.